वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू ग्रेट मास्टर हुजूर महाराज बाबा साउंड सिंह जी भंडारा सेकेंड ऑफ अप्रैल यू सी हिज पिक्चर बिहाइंड मी आई बिन अटेंडिंग दिस इवेंट फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम सिंस 2014 व्हेन आई आई गॉट इनिशिएटेड बाय माय मास्टर हुज पिक्चर इज नॉट हियर राइट नाउ हिज नेम वॉज मास्टर ईशोपुरी जी एंड ही वॉज इनिशिएटेड बाय दिस मास्टर Guzur Maharaj Baba Sahib Singh ji and after getting initiation in 2014 i made sure to attend this event 2nd of april every year uh, i i think most of the years i was able to attend with his grace and he always my master ishopuri ji always emphasized how important this day is 2nd of april that he used to call it bhandara i i did not know about bhandara before meeting master ishopuri ji i did not realize that there was a word called bhandara and i was not familiar with even santmat uh, i was i was aware of normal indian spirituality to some degree yoga and other paths fortunately i have been seeking i did not know how strong my seeking was only only later on i realized how important my seeking was because of which i was put in the situation of meeting my master ishopuri ji and over time he made me realize how important lot of people in the sangat were lot of people who were blessed by him in his company how how important seeking is in our life because of which we were put in his company we are all seekers here we are blessed to have this seeking we are blessed to have this life that we call human life and he he and other masters have told us how important this life is that we have been bestowed with we don't realize the importance of not only just this human life but even more important is the company of the masters that we come in contact with because of maybe our past life or past seeking that we have been put in this path to be in company of these masters and so i it was my fortune it is my great fortune in fact to be here amongst all of you seekers who have been seeking for a long time including myself to be celebrating this important day and that day bhandara that same day that many masters who have been in company of great master sound singh ji including my master master ishopuri ji used to celebrate and he used to look forward to this day that he could he could meet with all the disciples and celebrate with such a zeal such enthusiasm he used to look forward to this day and in fact my my memories of a great master a uh, sort of imagination of great master developed through the love that my master ishopuri ji used to share through his amazing stories that he used to tell i did not know this person uh huzur maharaj baba sahan singh ji but it feels to me as if there is there is a person that i have seen because of the way master ishopuri ji narrated all the stories starting from him meeting his own master on 29th day and how he was put in different situations how the love that he experienced from his master made him such a, a strong believer Uh, on this path and over time he was able to get everything that his master saman singh ji promised that he would be able to get and whatever his seeking was he will be able to find that ultimate truth so all the masters including saman singh ji have told us the importance of this human being life that we lead and 
how we should make use of the time that we have in this world and seek the truth. So we are, we are very fortunate that amongst us, we have so many seekers. If you look around in this world, you know, there are so many different type of life forms. And even in the human body, we have so many people around us. But if you see how many people are truly seeking, you know, it is, it is so minuscule compared to the, let's say, population of this earth. You know, if you look around uh, in your society, in a normal life, let's say in office, you know, it's, it's very hard to find people who are a true seeker, who have this thirst constantly going on. And for us to be in company of other seekers who are uh, true seekers, it is amazing coincidence. And I believe that it must be because of not only the work that we have done maybe in this life because of our seeking, but it must be due to some other reason that we don't completely understand. Maybe in the past, I cannot believe that it will just happen so coincidentally that we are so lucky to be just placed in this uh, in this body and especially in the company of perfect living masters which I believe my master Ishwapuri Ji was. Similarly, he believed that his master Uzur Maharaj Baba Saman Singh Ji whose picture you see behind was a perfect living master as well. And they were perfect living masters because their disciples knew and they experienced what they got from their master and they were able to validate what they were given to them. And they were able to check out all the promises that were made by perfect living masters. Of course, when you're on this path, you don't know. Most of the time, we don't know who the true teacher is. And because of our seeking, you know, we go around from place to place, which is not bad because we have been given this uh, free will in this human body we have been given endowed with the special abilities to be able to seek because our mind tells us that what we have is not right and it is able to discriminate and we are able to pass judgment on our circumstances which is a great thing because if you did not have this ability to be able to judge a situation then probably we would be most happy with whatever situation we are put in and we would not try to change that. But because of this special gift that we have been given, maybe mind, that we are able to discriminate whatever situations we are put in and able to pass some judgment, whether this is good, this is bad, this is right, this is wrong. And out of that, we are able to then realize that, you know, the thing that I have is, is not good for me. I don't want this. If you did not possess this ability, you'd be just like any other life form, like let's say plant or trees. There are so many different life forms around us. And you would just be merely living a life like them. There are animals, there are insects, and it's amazing if, I mean, I don't have to tell you, but you look around and there is so much wide diversity in this world and the life goes on. But how many people truly want to know who they are? And in a way, it is a special gift to be placed in strange circumstances and to be able to feel that it is uh, not a right place for us. I know there is a lot of suffering going on. There is physical suffering going on. There is psychological suffering going on. There's, there's suffering because of so many wars so much disease. Sometimes we are born in, in places that we can't understand. Let's say if you're born in a very poor family and where you are deprived of a lot of basic necessities of life, then you ask this question, why, what did I do? You know, who created me? Why am I being punished for the life that I'm living? I did not do anything wrong. Why is it happening to me? So these are some of the clues along the way that is thrown to us for us to realize that we are not in our perfect place and we want to achieve that perfection. 
the place that we we have been given let's say if you are poor then you want to make yourself happy and in the process you realize that what you have is is not conducive for your life you want to achieve something better and in the process let's say if you if you lack money and then you want to earn money to make yourself happy but when you have earned money you can look at the different side of the spectrum and realize that people who have a lot of money somehow they are equally sad maybe they don't uh, they don't they do not lack uh, the basic necessities but even though they may have everything there are other elements that impact them they are still not happy and so masters come in the midst, midst of us to tell us what is going on and they they make a friendship with us and they make us realize that what we see outside us is just like a dream like it is not real and they turn our attention back to the place from where everything is being created and they tell us that what we see outside is just a projection projection of our mind not only they just give us theory but they also give us practical advice most of the masters do that and you can look at different religions scriptures and most of these scriptures at the core of it were founded by you know some saints who realized what the truth was but over time because the religions are set up and people over time dilute the message and they forget what the true teachings were at the core of most of the religions it is about knowing yourself and finding the truth and finding god right but they they get over time they get involved in uh, different rituals and things that are not at the at the crux of knowing the truth so they get tied down into different rituals different processes they build temples they build a lot of monuments but forget what the truth is so masters come admist us again and again to remind us what the truth is so the best we can do is remember the message that was given to us and that is to turn inside because what we see outside is just a reflection of what is inside that has been their message all along that what we see outside in this physical world is all being created from inside and we are led to believe from our childhood that this is the only reality because the other part of this reality is not available to us easily because it a lot of people even on this path have hard time including myself to to find out that alternate reality it, that there is a possibility of things that is beyond what we normally experience in this life like the physical matter that we experience the gravity that we experience there is something beyond that that can be experienced most of the time we are not aware of it that there can be things that are available to us as a human being that can tell you or that can point to you that there is something more than the normal life that we experience and our masters throw clue along the way and with his grace with their grace we are given certain window into the experience that lies outside our normal day to day experience and most of the time we are we are in this tussle of living this life dealing with the problems that this life gives us and trying to go inward as our masters encourage us to to go inward in order to find the truth but it's quite challenging for everyone including myself how to go back in but masters again through different satsangs different events like this one encourage us to to find the the real truth because the time that we have in this world is fleeting it just goes away so quickly you might you may remember your childhood and uh, while growing up you were busy with all the toys different relationships and when you have 
when you get married, you have job, the world kind of ties you down. There is so much, sometimes it is because of the attachment that is out there in the world. Sometimes just life, it just takes you from through different places and you realize that you are just tied down into things that the world entices you with and you don't really have time to go inward. So by, by repeating these messages, these masters have always encouraged us to go inside ourselves. And because they say that the truth actually lies inside. Whatever we experience outside is just through a projection. It's like a dream that one day it is going to end. The life that we are leading now, you know, will, as a physical life, it's going to end soon. And then we'll, because of the laws of karma, whatever we have done here, we'll have to pay it back. We'll have to reap the rewards of whatever we are doing. And in the next life also, will we continue to, to do this? Basically, we'll work out our karma, not realizing how to get out of this world. Whatever we have done causes us to lead the next life. And if we are not aware as to why this life happened, we will always be in the cycle of continue to be taking birth, acting on our karma, and then again taking birth. So the best is to realize why we are here and to realize that only in this form, as masters have always said, that this human form that we have been given is very special and the time is very limited. And the, all the masters who have been born have actually died. Nobody lives around for forever. So the time is fleeting and the best we can do is in this life while masters like Samhain Singh Ji were around uh, in his time and like my master Ishwapuri Ji, while he was there alive, we can take advantage of that and take advantage to get his grace, have seeking so that he realizes that okay you are a, a seeker who wants to get enlightenment or good God knowledge right now in the current life so that you don't have to wait for next life. Because you could be in the next life again, but you'll have to go through the life and whatever life throws at you. We have been, a lot of people here uh, are for, we're fortunate enough to be in company of great master, Samhain Singh Ji. I was not so fortunate, or at least I do not know if I was in his company, but my heart through the stories that Ishwaji told us, me and so many other disciples, I believe that there's a part of me that was in his company. This strange feeling, because you know, I, I shared some of my experience with Master Ishwapuri Ji, and he, he nodded smilingly and said few things that let me believe that, okay, maybe I may not be part of that life, but somehow I'm in this place that is very special along with so many other disciples who have been blessed by him. Because it was great master Sound Singh Ji because of which the spirituality shifted to West. He realized way back in 1937 and he said that spirituality is going to shift to West in a big way. And he prepared people who could come to West and because in the West people were ready, there were a lot of seekers who were ready to receive the message. In the West people had, had experienced all kind of wealth, technology, different miracles of uh, modern life, automobiles, uh, modern transport, electronic gadgets, yet there was a part of their life that was not really fulfilling. They, they felt that they could go to moon and yet their life was not really satisfying. You could have the best of medicine, you could have best of transportation, food, all kind of food, yet there was a part of their life that was not completely satisfied and it was longing to get spiritual knowledge. So because of that seeking that people had, masters were compelled to send their disciples to help those souls that were seeking the truth 
seeking for an answer uh, as to why their life was not satisfying or in some cases life were miserable. In, in early decades, there have been so many wars. There was the Iraq War, before that Vietnam, and World War I, II, and so on. The wars have been going on for a long time. And so people who are suffering because of those wars uh, you know, must have been asking these questions. Why am I suffering? Why am I being put in this situation where I have to fight wars with people? So, and it turns out that every individual life is quite different. Not everybody experiences the same kind of joys and sorrows in their life. And similarly, two people who are born in the same family, it could be twin, they could have completely different outlook on their life. And so I believe to be able to seek, seek the highest knowledge that is available, we must be very special. It cannot be just a fluke that, you know, uh, without doing anything, we are just here trying to, uh, trying to seek the highest knowledge. It could be lottery, but if it was lottery, then, then everybody could get that lottery then it would all be same. But masters have told us that there is a there's a reason why we are at any place. They have said that any person that you meet in your life has something or other to give or take. You are working out your karma. You are put in special circumstances because of which you can take advantage of the life that has been given and masters especially watch over their disciples to make sure that they are able to fulfill their work here, they are able to pay off their karma and then move on to the next life. Next life, it may not be here. Masters have initiated disciples to take their hand so that they can get out of this place that is, that is a great cause for suffering. It's very difficult to find people who are not suffering. and People who are not seeking, of course they are probably involved in their life uh, and they are enjoying the great uh, joys that this life has to offer. And if they're happy, they don't have to look anywhere because most of us are trying to be happy. And if they can find happiness somewhere else, that is perfect. There used to be people who used to come to Master Isha Puriji and used to argue, why, why should I follow this path? And he used to say, you don't have to follow this path. You know, you continue with whatever makes you happy. And in time they would come back and complain about how their life is making them miserable. And so they would turn inside, following instructions of Ishapuriji. So I did not know this master, but I think there's a strong connection. And I felt that connection every time I heard stories from uh, Ishapuriji. And I experienced what a human being can experience, everybody can experience, that comes beyond what seems like what we are normally experiencing in our life, which is we are going about doing our business, we are thinking continuously, we are whatever work we have, we are engaging in that. But there are moments when we experience some strange kind of joy, strange kind of love from people. And so we realize in coming in contact with these masters that sometimes we have these glimpse of something called love that we experience but this love that we experience with masters seems to have no bound it comes from a place that that doesn't judge in any way there's absolute absolutely no inhibition there's nothing that passes any judgment on your particular being we always judge ourselves that we are not fit. You know, there's something lacking in us. We feel that, okay, we are not a good husband, not a good wife, not a good children. We have not succeeded in our life, right? We, as a human being, make a lot of mistakes that we look back on and say that, okay, I should not have done this, done that. But when you go to these masters, they completely forgive, forgive us. They don't judge us based on that. So the kind of love that we experience so amazing that it touches our core part of our being 
I've been very fortunate to to experience some of that through my master, Master Ishupuri ji, and it was always in the context of how he remembered his master, Baba Sound Singh ji, because of which it left some indelible experience in my mind that this man must be amazing man because not only Ishopuri ji but other masters have also recounted their stories about how they experienced uh, unconditional love from their masters, their perfect living masters. So I, I think that these masters are here to just give us that, glimpse of that because it's very hard for us to experience this. We always, in our, in our relations, if you observe, even in our good relations, you know, maybe husbands, wives, sons, daughters, grandparents, you know, we, or any other relation, you know, you'll find that it's a loving relation, but at some point you will always, you can always find times when things were not so good. There was always judgment between people, and there was maybe a dark spot, and but with these masters it's you cannot find any any blemish the kind of love that you experience is it feels like they know you much more than you know them or you know yourself because we pass judgment on ourselves that we did this we did that and maybe our mind is going to punish us maybe we are creating karma but these masters can completely ignore any of the blemishes you have, any of the judgment that you pass on yourself, and still with open arm they can accept you. Why is that? It is strange that these masters are just as human beings as us. They in fact go through a lot of pains, a lot of suffering in their own life. They have kids, they get married, they, they have jobs just like us yet they are able to hold that high vibration where nothing seems to affect them. Although for showing it to the world, they go through all the uh, routine life, like suffering, having a job, or sometimes as being part of a judge, you know, because I think Isho Puriji was, my master was, holding certain positions where he had to, uh, being as an administrator, he had to make sure that things are working in order and sometimes you have to you know, uh, pass stern warning or give strong instructions to people which may not be seen as a love you know and if you're uh, if you're saying certain things to people to correct their behavior you know that uh, that cannot always be seen in a loving way but they have to do these duties as a part of human being uh, as a part of people playing a role in this world. But at the core of themselves, they are a different being. They are God manifest in this body. And they are able to know that they are just acting out this role in this world. They can see us sort of trapped in this world as a soul suffering in this world. And they are here because of our seeking, because we don't like what we are experiencing. We have this thirst in us to get out of this mess we are in. And these masters can somehow hear it because they are an embodiment of God himself, the creator himself. Because they have tapped into this creator who can see everything, who is part of totality of consciousness, who are one with totality of consciousness. It's strange that a human being appearing in this world, just living a life like us, suffering like us, going through karma like us, and are still able to, at some point, with the grace of their master, able to tap into this unique, unique world from where everything is emanating, and are able to give you a glance of that, and give you a chance to become one with that. And all perfect living masters do that. I had a chance to read some of the stories of Baba Sound Singh Ji, where he as a disciple, you know, he used to work uh, as an engineer building roads. He has a normal life like most of us. He had 
kids he suffered as well and he was found by his master baba jamal singh ji and when baba jamal singh ji for the first time came to see him while he was working as a subdivisional divisional engineer and he was busy in his work and he saw this master this old man uh going and there was a lady following him bibi rukko and he saw them he thought that okay these are the people who are giving discourse uh and probably he didn't know that the they came to see him and so his master baba jamal singh ji went to he was going to go and give discourse and uh, bibi rukko said you have come to meet this guy and he doesn't even recognize you he doesn't even know you and so such was the ordinary condition of this master you know now we call him perfect living master but he also went through a lot of struggle in his life he was just like us and his master said that yeah he doesn't recognize us, me right now but i am here for him and in on the third or fourth day he is going to come and meet me and baba sawan singh ji had a friend who told him that there is a discourse going on and this is the subject you are interested in so maybe you should come and listen and on the fourth day he came and listened to the lecture and then he was amazed because baba sawan singh ji early on he had lot of seeking and he used to read lot of uh, sikh scripture guru granth sahib and he used to have lot of question and he would ask lot of people for guidance and but finally he was able to meet someone who could really answer all his questions he had doubt like most of us i mean i haven't i haven't met a person who who straight away you know came and became a disciple you know including ishu puri ji himself said that for 8 years he had doubt he tried out all different paths he in fact converted to different religions right i mean such was the seeking there are so many examples actually in india i knew uh, the part of india that i belong to uh, eastern part of india there was a saint shri ramkrishna Param- paramhans and he also had similar seeking he was following Adv- advaita vedanta uh, but he also had this great desire to seek and find truth in any way possible and he also converted into a different religion in order to find out what the truth is so such was the seeking of ishu puri ji and must have been the seeking of his master as well because if you see in history including uh, baba jamal singh ji who struggled for such a long time he went from place to place looking for answer and at some point he was able to get just these two words of five words that are given at the time of initiation and he realized after a lot of struggle that he was on the right path something was universe was guiding him uh, and he he struggled he traveled a lot of great distance in order to find the truth and finally he was led into the right direction and he was able to meet his own master uh, swami ji of agra who who started uh, at least the uh, the contemporary belief is that uh, radha swami started from there but masters have told us that masters don't appear just in one age and uh, just for few people but they come as long as there are seekers so a lot of us have been seekers right because of which we were able to uh, have master sawan singh ji make his disciple come over to united states so that he could guide us so sawan singh ji also went through his own struggle where he used to write lot of letters to his master uh, asking for clarification he he in fact in his physical life suffered he fell down from the horse while he was trying to uh, just uh, climb on the horse and his uh, one of the person that used to help him you know he cut the mane of the horse and he didn't realize it happened to him and he was trying to climb the horse and then he fell down and he had a fracture on his leg and if you see 
the pictures of uh, great master you would see him walking with the stick and a little bit of uh, you know unevenness in his leg so he actually suffered and he pleaded with his master to reduce his pain and his master said that i have already pleaded with with the creator and he has actually forgiven uh, your karma and so your your karma has been reduced from 5 years what should have taken you 5 year to heal the leg to down to 5 months so such was the grace already given by his master and he he had normal doubts like most of us as disciple he even said that i am not able to hear the sound in my head you know the sound that i hear is mixed up with other sounds you know so because his master used to say that get hold of the bell sound or the sound that you hear like cicada high pitch noise just continue to follow that but sound singh ji had difficulty following that i mean it's very hard to uh, you know recognize now imagine now that a master like sound singh ji would have that difficulty but it just shows that he was just a human being just like us so many of us have difficulty sitting in meditation we have so much doubt and while these masters are with us it is a wonderful opportunity for us to go to them because they are they are here because of us ishwar ji was here because of all of us he could have had a wonderful life in india he he retired from from very high post in india he held so many high positions in india that he could retire with ease without any problem yet he came here with just few dollars in his hand and he talked about his struggle in, in the beginning although he did, does, does not did not say this was a struggle he marveled he always marveled at the way life turned out to, uh, for him because at at the core he realized that his master is always with him he had manifested his master in him so he had he was beyond normal uh, life like uh, the the one that we live yet he was playing this role and he went through the ups and downs of this life when he came here he just carried few dollars and he did not have a place to stay uh, but fortunately with his master's grace you know a lot of friends turned up and a lot of amazing coincidences that he talked about he was able to have a business here that really flourished that earned some tens of millions of dollars on on his uh, high days at the same time he saw the other part as well where all the money had run out and he was having difficulty so he truly portrayed a normal life in that sense as a human being living in this world running into a lot of difficulties running into a lot of obstacles suffering he had health problems as well you might have seen the kind of glasses he used to wear at uh, when uh, in 70s he came he had huge massive glasses i just could not believe that he, it is the same man that we are looking at because when he uh, when with his huge glasses he would talk to anyone it it looked strange that it is not the same man you know a man that that we believe is the perfect living master who could from his inner eyes could see everything you know would would need to wear uh, these glasses to be able to see outside but they they are perfect example of this you know perfect human being that is uh, you know we see as him as our friends and they through their their own example they tell us that we are no different we are exactly like them we are suffering but they have been able to achieve this uh, unique state they were able to uncover what is beyond the veil through the grace of their own master and that is why they they you know in these events they so much talk about their master so much love that emanates from them and they tell us that this is a wonderful occasion to remember the perfect living masters that they were in company of who who were able to give them everything that they had promised like who you truly are how you are attached to this body because this you have been in this company of this body for such a long time since you have taken birth and everything we know is through our body every the whole experience that we have 
if it did not have this body, it's very hard to imagine. At least in this life, we associate everything in the relative terms with the body. We are able to see because of our eyes, we are able to hear because of our ears, we are able to smell because of our noses. All the sense perceptions that we have been granted, that is the, that is the reason we are able to perceive this world. We attribute the world that we see because of our senses. If we did not have these senses, probably you would not be seeing the same, uh, the world that we uh, see now. And our, our experience is so limited. If you see, you know, in terms of seeing, visually seeing, we are seeing this light and we are able to see these objects. But if you are a student of science, you know that the electro electromagnetic spectrum is so big and we see very small part of it you know, that our human eyes can perceive. So that's all we see. There's a lot of other frequencies that we can hardly see. You need special instrument for that. And so that part is extremely limited in comparison to what, what else is going on. In fact, it could be infin infinity. You know, you can have infinite range of uh, these frequencies, wavelengths that are going on. And our perceptible range is so small that, uh, that we only see what is in front of us you know, but there are animals, right? Like dogs and other animals can hear uh, uh, different frequencies. There is like dog whistle. So if you use that whistle, you know the dogs can hear and they'll they'll come and uh, you know interact with you. So th there can be a lot of different life forms, you know, that are able to see it in different frequency and they are creating their own world. Ishiji talked about one uh, one fly that that is born in this fruit. And uh, so as the fruit grows that the fly, you know, is inside, when you actually cut it, then you will be able to see that fly. And the, the world of this fly is just that fruit, you know, it doesn't experience anything beyond that. It's like a frog living in a well, you know, that is their world. And so we are able to perceive this world because we have these senses and we have abilities to, of course, go to different places and experience different things. But our attachments also arise because of the senses that we have. If, we, if you did not have an environment around you, most of the time, I don't think we will have any desire. A lot of desires arise because of what we see outside. We have relationships because we see other relationships that we want to emulate. We, we want to have child because somebody else has child, so you have a desire. You know, sometimes it's physical, uh, material desire. Sometimes it's different kind of desire. But if you did not have any of that, you won't be able to see ups, nor you'll be able to see down. So they always come in pairs. So it is, it is great that we are able to experience this. And sense perceptions allow you to experience these things. But if you really want to understand that why am I suffering, or if you have inquisitiveness, if you have thirst for this knowledge, a lot of scientists are trying to build different telescopes to understand, you know, what exists beyond what we can see. They are trying to understand, you know, how all this uh, creation is. They are dealing with this mystery of creation. Uh, they are able to see physical matter. They are able to see when, uh, they, they are able to measure the speed of light and they are able to develop theories as to when this world came into being. And so there are people, because of their personal reasons, they're trying to uncover uh, you know, why they are suffering, why they're going through uh, this, this world in a strange way, that a lot of times, even people who are born in their family, you know, they have difficulty adjusting with their family. They, they feel that they, are, they don't belong to that family, you know, because their beliefs don't really match with the family. Ishuji at one time he uh, he recounted his own story of how some Buddhist monk had come to his house and he was probably four or five years old and they had asked him uh, five questions and uh, they convinced uh, Ishuji's uh, parents that uh, in fact this boy was his their associate, Buddhist, it belonged to them. And they asked the question whether, uh, asked the question to Ishwaji, whether he wanted to go with them or wanted to stay in his family, in Ishwaji's family. 
And Ishwaji replied that, okay, he would like to go with the, the monks. And so even him at that age, uh, young age, you know, he felt that, okay, he was not in the right place. And not many of us have that fortune, but some of us, you know, did feel that the, even the birth that, uh, uh, you know, that happened or the life that we started with was in the wrong place. You know, somehow we did not uh, gel well with the environment that we were put in. And we always had this question. I mean, I remember I stopped eating meat when uh, I was a teenager. Something happened to me and then uh, my family used to eat meat. Uh, you know, and I'm not a very good example of being on, a, on this path uh, uh, because I've done things that I you know, probably would not share with all of you, but uh, with grace of masters like you know, Baba Saman Singh Ji uh, and, and uh, uh, my master, Ishupuri Ji, you know, I was able to put on, put on this path. There must be uh, uh, element of me, part of me, that was desperately see seeking because I felt that my life was somehow uh, a misfit. And similarly, most of the masters also recognized that the place that they were in somehow uh, was not the right place. They were seeking for higher knowledge. And these masters were able to, uh, through uh, their masters, through the grace of their master, were able to get this blessing and were able to open this world beyond our physical perception that we see. So Baba Sound Singh Ji also went through a lot of these difficulties. He had a lot of challenges in terms of uh, understanding or realizing the truth. He was having difficulty uh, getting this sound inside him. And he, he used to ask a lot of questions to his master. He would always write a lot of questions and his master lovingly would, would respond to all his questions and would in fact do some miracles for him because so much was the, the seeking uh, for Baba Saman Singh Ji to be in his company, uh, in the company of his own master <coughs> that sometimes he would, uh, he would uh, not really neglect but he would not want to attend to his duties because he was an engineer and he had to uh, uh, he had to be he had to attend to certain duties in certain times uh, and uh, Sound Singh Ji would attend satsangs of his master uh, and would not want to go back to his to attend his duties uh, and his master would know that in his heart that okay Sound Singh Ji doesn't want to go back to his duty and he's missing something and he may get penalized uh, from the administration and and Saman Singh Ji found out later that apparently some other uh, Saman Singh Ji you know took his part uh, and attended to the duty that he had to, to take care of so he attributed that to his master and said that this master my master took the form of Saman Singh Ji and attended to the duty that he had to perform and he had given so many examples of such incidents that had happened to him. There have been a lot of other uh, satsangis who have said, who were in difficulty, and uh, I do not remember the name now, but there was some war going on between, I think, uh, India and Pakistan. Uh, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, these satsangis, they realized that they won't be able to escape, so they sat in meditation, and then they called upon his master and prayed to him that uh, please rescue us and suddenly uh, a path uh, he was instructed they were instructed by the master that behind the bush there is a way to escape and so although we we see these masters as human beings they have a different connection they are connected to the total totality of consciousness and perfect living master, you know, by definition, as Ishuji, my master, explained, that they are connected to the realities at every level. When they speak to us, they are at all different five levels. And so they are able to see the, the completeness. 
And so from that level, they are able to help us and they are able to guide us. I was, I was fortunate to be able to hear a lot of stories of Baba Sound Singh Ji directly from Ishupuri Ji. I had good fortune of spending time with him uh, in sort of personal setting where just either me or few people were around. And he so lovingly narrated his own experiences uh, with his master. Uh, he narrated the experience of his getting initiated. One of the things that he uh, that touched my uh, heart was that his master took him, uh, Ishupuri Ji's master, Sound Singh Ji, took him to the place where uh, Sound Singh Ji's master used to have this small hut and where he got initiated. And when Sound Singh Ji took him, took, uh, took Ishupuri Ji in that hut, Sound Singh Ji's eyes were in tears. And that was the first time my master Ishupuri Ji saw that uh, his master had ever cried. Those were not uh, tears of crying, but th those were tears of thankful, of being thankful. You know, because he experienced so much love from his master and his master gave him everything. What, what else can somebody ask for that you are able to see the truth and you are able to be one with the whole creation? You are able to see yourself as the creator or being part of the creator. He was able to get this amazing truth, uh, not in terms of just a knowledge, not in, in terms of just the words, but to be able to live that, to be able to experience that. And Sound Singh Ji had tears in his eyes as he, as he took uh, Master Ishupuri Ji in that hut and uh, probably gave him some instructions as well. So all the masters that, uh, that we see, they have gone through this path of being a normal person and through the grace of their master, they were able to slowly develop spirituality in their heart and slowly go beyond doing this normal duty in this world and yet being able to see the part of the truth that is, that is never changing. Everything that we experience in this world is constantly changing. And that is why we say that what we experience is not real. Because if something doesn't st stay as is, that cannot be truth. It may be a true experience for the time being, but it is not eternal. With time, everything changes. With time, our body changes. You know, but, but somehow there is a part of us that believes that we are still the same. You can remember your past, uh, you can remember your childhood, you can remember going to school, but you always say that, okay, it was you who was going to school, you who were playing with your friends. You can just recall just a few years in the past and say that it was you. But if you compare a small child and you now as an adult, there's a vast difference. Everything about you has changed. You know, you have grown bigger, like me, fatter maybe, you know. We have grown gray hairs, we have children. Everything about us has changed significantly. And in fact, science would tell you that, you know, uh, parts of our body constantly regenerate every few years. Nothing stays same. And yet we say that, okay, it is us, it is me who experience certain things. So there's, there's a truth to that. And, but we somehow misleadingly take this body as, as us, although this is the name, we have been given certain names, and because we are called by those names, we uh, attend to uh, our uh, calling and we react to that. But the, the body is gonna die after certain years. Nobody has lived beyond maybe 100 years. But there is a part of us that can always associate as the life is progressing from our childhood, adulthood, old age, and so on. In fact, a lot of people, they remember that they were 
certain other people in their life. If you see being a spiritual person, you always feel that there's a part of this life that is beyond physical. And we give a lot of importance to uh, maybe reincarnation or things that is normally uh, not uh, accepted by science. We have somehow this other part of us that is more receptive to other ideas of, you know, we like to hear stories of this miracle happening, that miracle happening, you know, maybe like a gossip, but uh, we are very inquisitive. In fact, attending all the Bhandaras, the best part for me was listening to all the stories that Master used to say about uh, what his master, uh, you know, used to narrate or things that have happened with the great master, like the story of Julian Johnson, you know, how meeting for the first time, he was able to get this experience, uh, even though he was a missionary and he did not believe in, you know, Santmat or this type of spirituality other than Christianity, he never, he never met a person who could be so open, who could uh, express his love in such an unconditional way that he said that in two hours that I was able to meet him, I would, I would be happy if, uh, if, I, if nothing else happened in my life. You know, these two hours are uh, the most productive in, in my life. And even if I did not get anything else, I would, be, uh, I would be happy with my life. And imagine uh, being in, in the company of these great masters for a long time. We have truly been blessed. Without, If we have an opportunity while living in this life to be able to find this truth or glimpse of truth because they are here for us, if we are able to hear their discourses, able to apply their teaching, ask them the questions, and able to, through their grace, are able to find the truth that they themselves discovered, I think we would, we would be doing justice to the work that they have done. Because they have, like I was saying, that my master, Ishupuriji, he gave up everything in India. In fact, uh, from what I hear, uh, that it was, uh, it was difficult for him to come over to this, this place. And uh, he, uh, through some, uh, some folks in, in, uh, in Vegetarian Health Society, he was able to get a sponsorship to come to United States to do a business. And uh, even uh, till his dying days, he was constantly thankful to these people who brought him over here because he recognized that without these people's help, he would not be uh, here doing great master's work. So he went through the difficulty, established a business. Uh, he uh, initially, he had uh, very little income to survive on. And uh, he, uh, he, he told me some interesting uh, stories where uh, the gentleman, uh, you know, uh, gentlemen who brought him over here, uh, they did not give him enough uh, uh, pay to, uh, for him to live a good life. Then the business was doing okay, so-so, you know. And at some point, they realized that, no, we should, we should treat uh, issue G properly and then so let's give everybody the same pay and the business started booming after that when they compensated him fairly uh, as as equal amongst them and uh, then they as they were given proper partnership the business really grew and my master issue G always uh, said that it is because of great masters blessing you know, that the, these companies are doing well. And uh, at, at one point, uh, he was uh, fired from the job. And uh, this was while the company was actually doing good and started at, uh, uh, was not doing so, so well. But I think the, the partners decided to, uh, to fire him. And then immediately, the business started going down. And so, and he always said that, See, they are doing this to me. That's why Great Master is punishing them. So he could, he always translated everything in terms of the love that he experienced from his master. 
and he had uh, he had shared so many stories uh, and uh, one time it was very special for me that uh, this was after 2019 uh, bhandara event uh, i wanted to see him for a few minutes uh, because like everybody else i had difficulty in meditation so i thought okay i'll get things clarified in my head uh, directly from master but i knew that you know i've heard enough of his discourses i haven't uh, even after hearing it you know i'm not able to uh, do proper meditation so I, I understood that so i had you know after a lot of struggle i had sort of given up but i still wanted to meet him you know just just have my two or three minutes so that i could just ask him question get the same answers and be still be happy that okay i was able to see him so you know i met him for a few minutes and then i hear knock on the door that my three minutes were over and i was being thrown outside and then uh, ishiji just stopped me you know he said okay wait uh, and then uh, he said uh, you know i've uh, told this story but i want to tell you again that uh, you know when i was a small boy my master used to carry me uh, in his hand and then he would take me to this burfi shop you know uh, and he would take out some money from uh, inner pocket and then buy these sweet burfis and uh, and he would give it to me with his own money own personal money and so i remember the taste of that burfi still fresh in my mouth in my mind and so somebody gave me this burfi today that exactly remembers and the taste is exactly like that so i want you to have a little bit of this as a prasad and so to me it was as if i am living that moment that he described that he is i am able to visualize how as a small boy he is he is being carried by his master you know what kind of love that somebody could experience we experience a lot of these similar love with our parents you know uh, uh, or family members and so on but this seems to cross any boundaries you know there is a man that doesn't have any uh, you know blood relationship yet he is offering you so much love and he is able to see beyond whatever you see as your boundaries because we define ourselves with uh, with different attributes you know we have uh, you know we belong to particular place uh, you know a lot of us are indian you know we define ourselves uh, uh, with our geography religion age uh, different attributes we just impose it on ourselves and here is a person who is able to see uh, the true being you know uh, inside us the true soul that is seeking for the reality and they are able to sense that and so they don't look at how you look how you physically look you look dark uh, you look uh, white you look different color you can't speak religion you can't speak different languages they completely ignore that you know and in fact they tell you that uh, you are a old friend a lot of lot of people that master ishiji used to meet with and he used to say that oh i have been waiting for you you know or oh, you have been my friend so they they realize that eternal truth that we cannot see so it is our wonderful fortune to be able to experience that so i was able to in in my master's company i was able to see the glimpses as if you know i was able to visualize how what kind of impact this man left in my master that he would he would without stopping he would he can talk about his master all the time most of the time you know he would he would bring the topic back to his master i somehow observed that uh, that there is there is nothing that he would not give him credit for one time he was at our house and uh, i know his day started quite early around uh, 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock and he was in california uh, doing a imr and then we were supposed to pick him up in the afternoon to bring him back to our house and so we realized that okay our day also started a little early so we went and picked him up and then we ended up going for lunch to a, a restaurant where a lot of other disciples were there and i think in the morning he had just finished a discourse uh, and but the 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 imr was over and then 
when we were uh, having lunch, of course, everybody wants to hear him. So he is, uh, you know, he is the center of uh, the table and people are listening to him. And I thought, okay, uh, this man can talk, you know, of course, you know, he can nonstop talk and, and uh, attend to everyone, right? Uh, so as if he's uh, able to have conversation with everybody in the table and pay right amount of attention. And, and I, I s felt that he's able to uh, somehow, you know, there were situations where, uh, you know, people, some people were uh, too emotional and how he was able to keep himself away uh, and and uh, most important part was not uh, making sure that nobody is getting hurt. And so he's playing a part of a normal human being, you know, interacting with everyone. And so as we brought him to our house, of course, again, we had a lot of conversation, mostly him, him talking. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't know any, much about him, you know, other than what he used to uh, share in his uh, discourses and uh, uh, like about his businesses you know quite uh, quite a bit of detail about that and uh, quite a bit of his early life uh, so and while listening to you know so he was uh, at our place around uh, probably three four o'clock and he left around uh, 9 30 10. we tried to hold him you know as much as possible uh, but i was realizing that i was getting tired you know so uh, because listening to somebody like Ishupuri ji for such a long time can be extremely taxing in terms of attention because you are giving your constant attention. So it was hard for me. And I was constantly thinking, how come this man is not getting tired? And here I am, I'm about to yawn and still not show that, okay, I'm yawning. Uh, and uh, so I asked him, you know, towards the end of the day, uh, I know we had offered him tea and he had just taken maybe a few cups of, a few sips of uh, that tea. And uh, whenever I felt that he was getting tired, he would just brush his eyebrow and as if he would be fresh. And so uh, at the end of the day, I asked him, you know, how is it that, you know, you're able to keep yourself fit at this age, you know, almost 90 year old. And I think he was 90 plus <clears throat> and uh, still do all these still able to keep up with us and meet so many people and he said when you're doing great master's work he makes sure that you have all the energy that you need he, he makes it work for you so I don't do anything you know it is the great master that does all the work and I've seen him in other circumstances also I mean like the how the business has flourished and he was giving total credit of that to a uh, great master and and I believe so, you know. To to uh, to a good degree. I mean, I in my mind there was no difference between him and great master, because great master was in him all the time. And and he knew. He said a very interesting thing that uh, that it looks like I am doing all this. I know part of me tells me that I am doing it. But I, at the same time, I know that it is not me. I know because I can see that it is him doing it. So such is the grace of uh, perfect living masters. And it is his Bhandara that we're celebrating. We are celebrating because we want to remember the message that he gave us. We want to remember the grace that used to flow and still flowing even now and will keep, keep on flowing. Because Master said that grace always flows. Our attention is not there to catch it. So it is a very special day because on this day he left his physical body. And for people who were initiated by him, they were able to see him. And they, they knew that this Master has not gone anywhere. They are still in their heart. They can still see them. They can interact with him. And they can see that grace is still flowing. Master Ishuji used to say that the grace is flowing like rain today. And used to give analogy of the name Savan. And so the grace is still flowing today because if we remember him, if we remember how compassionate he was, 
and remember the at least for me i remember the story of my master interacting with great master and able to visualize the kind of love that he experienced and in my personal experience also i saw how my master used to talk about him in in my personal association that it was never about him so i think the we can take advantage of the time that we have we, we can remember this special day when we can go into meditation you know as he taught us that imagine being in the center of your head because most of the time the mistakes that we uh, make is we are so much attached to the outside world that we do not know how to go inside and we don't start the journey from the right place by being at the center of the head because when you start imagining that you are already there and because of the special power this consciousness in us has that it is able to concentrate on anything and it is able to forget about anything else so like the way we are experiencing the world here you are able to see me here but you are able to see a lot of other things great master's picture the fan the mic here our attention is scattered you are because you are you are paying attention to everything that is there but at the same time the same power that is able to perceive of this world can be used to to gather attention to focus it wherever you want so if you are able to imagine it, it doesn't have to be real but you start with the imagination that you are in the middle of the head and once you do that your attention about the physical aspect of this world wherever you are positioned whatever sound it, it may be coming you may be uh, peripherally hearing it but you know that will just disappear because your attention is somewhere else and when you imagine that you are at the center of the head for sufficient time you you will slowly start withdrawing your uh, att attachment or attention a part of uh, your faculty that is associated with other things you know that will start withdrawing and you will realize that by sitting in the middle of the room where it was absolutely dark and absolutely nothing was happening you'll start seeing the change happen you'll start hearing sound you'll start seeing light then you'll realize that okay there is there is something you'll be able to see so much light that you know you might think that okay maybe the sun has come up outside you know sometimes a lot of us you know maybe meditate in the in the early mornings when there is no light and then you'll start seeing so much light that you you might think that okay probably it is uh, you know the sun has already come up uh, or maybe somebody has turned on the light in the room so by by placing yourself there you you will be able to withdraw your attention inside and because what masters have explained is that everything is everything that we experience outside is being emanated from inside so how do we find out what the reality is and they have given us technique art of meditation where you know you place yourself at the right place and then by just by the virtue of being there and keeping your attention there you start withdrawing your attention and your attention becomes more and more on where you are so you'll start hearing sounds you'll start seeing without your physical eyes you'll you'll know that there's light inside there's so much light inside with that you'll be able to and and master had also sort of talked about you know how to differentiate how to see yourself not as a physical person or not as a mind or thought but separate from that if you are sitting in that place and make a determination that i'm not going to think so you start watching your thought then you will realize the thoughts would still crop up and you'll be able to distinguish yourself if you are attentive enough you'll be able to watch your thoughts you'll be able to see thoughts springing so something in your head will uh, you know because you're imagining the head that you're sitting in right in the middle and you're consciously watching what's going on so as thoughts spring up you'll be able to see your thought 
you know you'll be able to see meaning physically see you know you'll you'll see that thoughts uh, are springing up as images so that's the process that's the that's the way to sort of withdraw yourself inside in the waking up st waking stage so this cannot be done in the in the sleep time because you know you are not at the right place so you have to sit while in the waking uh, phase you make this you imagine your head uh, being like a room and you are sitting right in the middle of it and then by placing yourself at the right place you'll be able to go in the right direction so that's the meaning of going inside inside your body you know inside your head from where the consciousness is going out from where all the sense perceptions are operating from where you are able to see ultimately your physical organs they are just uh, uh, sort of coverings on top of what is inside your mind can see everything but these physical things that are placed on top of it are acting as obstruction but inside you are able to see much more and from there you'll be able to if you have been initiated then you'll be able to see your master and then your, your all job is over you know if you're able to see radiant form of your master then job done that's how I feel you know and but for most of the time you know our struggle is sitting in meditation thinking about our master it is a struggle because we are not used to doing this we are used to attending to our job we have so many attachments uh, and we create more and more attachment for ourselves every day if you go to any travel destination you know the desire to travel somewhere and see that place you know that itself is an attachment but masters live in this world they also go about doing this they say that okay enjoy the the things that are given in this world this is for enjoyment but realize that this is not going to last you are not going to take anything back home and you have been also given this special gift of this life and especially being around masters that you have been given special uh, chance opportunity to take advantage and realize the truth because any difficulty we have they are going to help you along the way you know they are in the physical form available to you and also if you are able to go inside and see his radiant form he will answer all your questions so I just wanted to share a little bit of my experience you know and I feel the, all the I do not have any personal experience of sound singing myself but fortunately I have uh, uh, been given some experiences uh, which I was able to corroborate with uh, with masters uh, my master uh, Kishu Puriji and he, he said that yes uh, these are real and uh, you know uh, so along the way he was able to confirm certain things for me so which I have been very fortunate of and uh, with with my master's grace and I think with my uh, master's master's Savan Singh Ji's grace I'm you know he had asked me to perform this duty and I consider myself extremely lucky uh, given my totality of my life if I were to look at it I had a very small not even a possibility of even sitting here you know and talking to you folks you know I'm, I'm a very introvert person you know I don't like, like to talk to people it's very hard for me to uh, forget discourse you know even engage in in conversation you know I try to hide but uh, yet you know uh, I'm here talking to all of you uh, I can only consider this as my great fortune that he's allowing me he's giving me strength to be able to talk to all of you to be able to meet so many seekers you know I, I truly consider my fortune that uh, you know uh, although you know looking back I feel that I was seeking but my seeking somehow led me to this much bigger seeking uh, whenever I see uh, satsangis and how people used to line up and uh, wait for few moments of time with uh, my master I feel so fortunate to be able to spend a lot of time with him uh, although I met him in 2014 uh, I really you know uh, my association with him grew towards the end uh, I would say 2017 18 19 
or so, I was able to see him more and more frequently. And only with his grace, uh, you know, he allowed me to do that. And so I consider especially lucky uh, to be able to come and share a little bit of my personal experience with him and share the message that he has been giving for such a long time since uh, he came to this country and, and even before that and uh, without getting tired, uh, without caring for how much money, uh, personal money he, he had uh, to spend in order to do his master's work. Uh, without, I mean, in service of his master, he did not uh, see anything else. There was no obstacle uh, in his mind. And so uh, it's, it's my extreme, uh, uh, there's, there's no word to express, you know, that uh, I'm here, uh, trying in my humble ways to uh, do a uh, little bit of work that he assigned me. And uh, so I wanted to thank all of you for organizing uh, this event and this venue uh, and uh, my great fortune to be able to see you all and talk to you because I'm a seeker. Uh, so I understand you know, what happens in seeker's mind. So uh, and to be able to help each other uh, you know, in, in this path uh, it is my great honor and I may not be able to help. Uh, I'm just a seeker like you. Uh, I'm just reinforcing the message that masters uh, have left. And uh, I sometimes try to help whatever I can, but I'm also I'm realizing that uh, the power comes from Sound Singh Ji uh, and the power comes from my master, you know, Ishupuri Ji. And I'm seeing that in action. Uh, although as a part of uh, Isha chairman, you know, I'm trying to make sure that his vision of making a meeting hall and Dera, which will be called uh, Dera Baba Saun Singh Ji in Bruce, that comes to fruition. And, and I'm going to make sure that in, because, uh, this is a physical activity and so, uh, you know, there is a team that is helping me and uh, he had told me that, uh, my master had told me that, uh, I'm so happy that you are part of this dream that I have uh, of making this meeting hall. So I know a lot of us are part of this dream and we are working towards it. So I consider that as a great fortune. And so, you know, in that capacity, we are trying to do everything that we can. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, I'm holding a discourse like this in my uh, humble ways, whatever I can do. Uh, and I can see already that as I try to respond to questions from uh, various disciples uh, of Ishwaji and my brothers and sisters, uh, that even though I may not have an answer, so as I reply back that, okay, I do not have an answer, let me find an answer for you. Before I can actually find an answer, they get an answer. You know, their, their replies come back saying that, oh, don't worry about it, I found an answer, you know, in meditation. And I've been seeing so many coincidences that I cannot but wonder, uh, you know, whether, uh, I mean, there, there's no wonder anymore that I know that it is Ishwaji doing everything. And so my, uh, you know, like everybody else, I'm also going through my own journey. And uh, so, but uh, day by day, I'm, I know that the only power that is there that is getting work done is Sound Singh Ji's and my masters. So I'm here to just pay a tribute to him and tribute to all of you who are part of this. And you know, I want to encourage myself and everybody else to, to go inside. This is a perfect opportunity uh, because now, because of this Bhandara, we can remember him, remember everything about him, about the love that he gave to Ishupuri Ji and other, uh, other masters, other disciples, he initiated so many people, more than 100,000 people, right? So the kind of love that he expressed. Uh, so we can, if we can think about that, keep that in mind and uh, go in meditation. Because I, I, from my personal experience, I realize that when you are in that, uh, your mind is focused in devotion or remembering uh, your master, then how much better your meditation can be. Uh, so. Uh, I think that's why masters have always emphasized the value of thinking about your master, uh, having a dhyan on your master, remembering uh, your master uh, personally, 
how he gave you personal attention uh, you know e even if you saw him in a public event how uh, what he was saying how he was smiling how he was cracking jokes so and if you have your personal experience that is even more uh, you know important uh, that counts even more because now you can build build upon that thinking about that and use imagination to go deeper and deeper uh, ultimately it is the love that you experience from him that makes you a true uh, devotion true devotee uh, because this is a path of love and devotion you know and uh, unless you experience that love unless your attention is there on your master uh, you know it's hard to experience that love and it's hard to develop that devotion and it is hard to get that grace because the grace is flowing right but if our attention is not there then it's very hard to catch it right if, if the mind is blocking uh, you from going inside if mind is uh, is still tied down in your attachment in different attachments it's very hard to focus yourself on master's form it's very hard to think about the master so there's a perfect opportunity that because this is a bhandara you know we can especially give attention we can uh, make a special time for uh, doing our meditation and remember our master and and fulfill the the desire that he had of taking a lot of souls back with him and that will be our perfect tribute um, ishuji had said uh, during his uh, his birthday that a lot of people were sending him various kind of mails and congratulating him and they wanted to uh, offer him something and he said if you want to offer me anything just offer me 5 minutes of meditation sincere meditation so i think the best we can do as a seeker you know who really want to know truth is sit in meditation do our best think about our master and and uh, ask for his grace with that uh, i'm going to uh, you know conclude this satsang thank you so much for uh, allowing me to come here uh, speak in front of you this is being broadcast uh, for isha as well and i'm so happy to be here see a lot of you for the first time uh, some of you i have already met in the past uh, because we have been uh, so, uh, disciples of isha puri ji so i'm extremely thrilled to be here uh, in your company thank you so much